excellent experiments. Magic and mayhem. Facts and fun. Rain, rain, go away. No, no, again. no, no, no. Nope, that's not how it's supposed to be done. It's supposed to be rap, not saying. Kind of like this. Rain, rain, go away. Come again another day. Little, Little Seth wants to play. Rain, rain, go away. Wow, I did not even know how to rap. I do. I love rapping. Wow, that was fun. <laughs> yeah. But what was all that about? Today, we're making rain cloud in a glass. Really? Yes. Whoa. We're going to make a cloud? Yeah. Wow, I can't wait. Mm -hmm. It's going to be really fun. For this experiment, you need two glasses. Water. Shaving foam. Food color. And a water dropper. Let's get started. The first thing you need to do is to add water into your glass, like three quarter. Not a lot. Like that. And you add in yours. Then you take your shaving foam, you add a little. I think that's okay. I think that's okay. So we're gonna so flatten it down yeah. like that with our hand. Oh, it feels so weird. Yeah. Then we're going to take our water dropper and put the food coloring inside. Whoa, yeah. mine. Now I need to drop it inside. It's still yeah. Oh, wow. I didn't see Yours it. Yours has started. Oh, wow. So as like rain, it's slowly pouring down yeah. onto the water, into the water. It's kind of cool. This is very cool. It's like the lava lamp experiment we did. Yeah. Where when we added the food coloring on top, it mm -hmm. like seeped through the oil. It was really cool, through the water. <laughs> Whoa, that is so beautiful. So Stacy, how does this work anyway? Well, clouds are formed when water vapor rises into the air. When the vapor hits cold air, it turns back into droplets of water. Oh, so those tiny drops of water floating in the air collect and stick together to form clouds. Exactly. So when the clouds get so full of water that they can't hold anymore, the water falls back to the ground as rain. Oh, so the food color droplets get so heavy on the cloud that they break through and pour down into the water. Yes. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. We really, really enjoyed this experiment and it's very educational because I did not know that's how clouds worked before. So you can try this really fun experiment to your family and friends because it's really cool. This is Seth. And this is Stacy. And this is Sema's Lab. Wait, Sema's Lab? More like Sema's Rap. <laughs> rain, rain, go away. Come again another day. Little Seth wants to play. Rain, rain, go away. Bye. Bye. So guys, we're going to see water walking. Water walks? Yes. Let me guess, they need roads to walk on? Well, the roads are paper towels. Wait, seriously? Yeah. Oh, that's kind of interesting. Let's get started. The ingredients for this cool experiment are food color. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven cups. Spatula. Water. Stirring rod and paper towels. Before this, we already put water in four of the cups. And uh, now we're going to add food coloring to each cup with water. So I'm going to add pink. And I'm going to add orange. And then, and as you can see, we have four spatulas and four stirring rods. Yeah. Now I'm going to add red. So Seth is going to fold first so we can show you how to fold. fold. And we're gonna fold it like this. So you'll end up with this. Now we're gonna put it inside like here. Like that. And you'll see it's already starting to walk. So you leave the experiment for three to four hours so that the water walks up the paper towel into the upper cup. So guys, we waited for three full hours and look at the end result. I told you the water works. Wow, I didn't think so. Yeah. So, the pink mixed to the purple to make a magenta or plum color. And the purple mixed to the red and it makes a brownish. It looks like a darker purple maybe. And now the red went inside 
to the orange and they made yellow. You have any questions? Yeah, how does this work? Well, the water walks up the tissue and goes to the cup that didn't have water. Oh, that's cool. This is called capillary action. Oh, I think I heard of that one time. Yeah. Do you want to show them? Yeah. Look at all the colors that mixed. It's so, really cool. We really, really love this experiment. And you should try it at home because this can be also a hobby. And remember to tag us at hashtag Semas Lab. This is Seth. And this is Stacy. And this is Semas Lab. Okay, so Seth, do an arrow going this way. Okay. This way? Yes, this way. Okay. Up here and down here. Oh, well, I think this way. Well, why do you want me to do this? You just have to. There. And another arrow go up down here. Okay. You go up this way. I'm confused. It's fine. Just do an arrow. I'm okay. confused. Now, which side is the arrow? That. Wait, no, it's facing that way now. What? No, it's not. It's facing this way. Wait, um, it was. <laughs> Let me explain. So, the reason for. Seth's confusion is because of refraction. So when I put the card here, the arrows will be at a different side. There. There. Well, that's cool. Yeah, I know. So. This happens because of refraction. Refraction happens when light travels from one medium to the other, like from air to water to water to air. Yeah. And you can demonstrate this by using simple materials like water, paper, and, and a marker. marker. So what you do, you just draw an arrow facing the same side like this. So we can draw one real quick. Yeah. I'm going to draw the other one. Okay. And then like that. Facing the same side. And, and now when you hold it behind water, you'll see it facing the other direction. So there are different types of refraction. Like when you put like a ruler inside the water, it looks like it's bent or broken. Well, I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we'll try that another day. Yeah. We really, really enjoyed this experiment because it was a cool thing. I was confused at the beginning. It was pretty weird how it like changed from this direction to the other direction when it was behind water. But yeah, it was really fun to do. It was very easy to do because of all these simple materials that yeah. you can find at home. Yeah. And make sure to tag us at hashtag Simuslab. And if you want to check out our other videos, click right here. This is Seth. And this is Stacy. And this is Summer's Lab! Oh, you brought Mr. Bunny again. Yeah. Why? Because he's my pet and it's Easter. Well, as much as I love Mr. Bunny, you know he's not allowed to be in the lab. Come on, Seth, just this one. Okay, I guess. <laughs> Today we're going to make bunny pencil holders. Let's get started. In this activity, we're going to be using paint, tissue roll, paintbrush, plate, googly eye, scissors, glue, and paper. So the first thing is to take the paint, our blue paint, and put it on the paper plate. My favorite color. Yeah. That's, that's enough. I think it's enough. Now we're going to paint the uh, paper roll. Yeah. The tissue roll. Mm -hmm. So you hold it, I paint it. Okay. Now you're going to make me get paint on my fingers. No, I'm not going to paint your fingers. So I'm going to paint it in super blue. Now I'm going to start cutting the bunny ears. Mm -hmm. So. What I'm gonna do is fold the paper in half, like so. And then I'm going to take my scissors and cut out some a pair of ears. Now that we've let it dry for a bit, we're going to add the base, just like that. Maybe we should make it a bit bigger, but that's for you guys to do at home. If it doesn't work, make a bit of a bigger base. Yeah. So yeah. Because it can't work without the base. Yeah, yeah. The pencils would just be falling out. Yeah. So, so the next thing is the mouth, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we waited for it to dry and it's all dried up. 
Yeah. As you can see, it's looking good. <laughs> yeah. That's that's a funny bunny. Yeah. So we made a few others. Yeah. Like this one. I made this, this one. This one. Yeah. So they can store pencils and mm -hmm. a lot of other things, like just like rulers and erasers and things that you need for school. Yeah. Let's test it out. I'm gonna take some pencils. It works. Yeah. As you can see, I'm gonna put some in this one too. Ooh. Mm. And this keeps your pencils from going all over because yeah. it's so stable mm. and it's pretty. Yeah. <laughs> Please make sure you try this at home and tag us at hashtag Summer's Lab. This is Seth. This is Stacy. And this is Summer's Lab. Hey guys, I really love doodling because it's so much fun and you just do whatever you want. Seth, do you like it? Yeah, I love doodling. In the corner of the pages when I'm bored, I draw little suns with smiley faces and I love doing that. If you love doodling, then this is the episode for you because we're going to be making a doodle bot. Let's get started. For this experiment, you'll need salt tip, a plastic cup, rubber, a battery, glue, a three volt motor, scissors, googly eyes, and markers. Yeah. So first we're going to take the plastic cup and tape the marker pens to all four sides. So I had cut a few pieces of tape beforehand, and if you can help me, please. <laughs> and you wanna make sure you do this patiently so that you can level them. You can maybe mark a certain place so that they're all leveled, and yeah. You're gonna tape the DC mortar to the cup using masking tape, so you're gonna cut. And roll it like, like a, like that. Yeah. Then I'm gonna tape it to, like that. Okay, let's first put the googly eyes first. Yeah. And then you put that. I'll be doing the taping the wires to the battery. Now I'll put the googly. Tape them to both ends. Okay, uh, so I'll hold the motor off until she's finished putting the googly eyes. Now we're gonna take the ends off the markers. And let's get to some doodling. Whoa, that's so cool. Yeah. You can see it's slowly drawing circle. Um, some yeah. of the colors won't be drawn because they're not leveled. That's why you need patience, but as you can see, it's still drawing and it's really, really cool. So Seth, how does this work? Well, the motor is spinning and the eraser makes it vibrate and that vibrates the cup, which moves the pens. And then we get this awesome robot and we hope to make bigger and cooler robots that do even more stuff. Yeah. We really, really enjoyed making this robot. And we really hope you do this at home because the googly eyes are very odd. Wait, where are they? <laughs> Did you take them off? Maybe. <laughs> okay, whatever. Make sure to tag us at hashtag Semma's Lab. Semma's Lab. This is Seth. And this is Stacy. And this is Semma's Lab. Stacy, do you like French fries? I love French fries. It's my third favorite thing to eat. What's your first? Duh, chicken. Well, same. <laughs> well, today we are using potatoes, but unfortunately they're not going to be cooked. Oh, no. But it is a cool experiment to do. Okay, let's get started. So for this experiment, you'll need two containers. Water, salt, and potato. Let's do this. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is take the water and put it there. To there. So in one, one, will have, one container will have salt and one will not. So we're gonna add, ah, let's all add all it. the salt. Just add all the salt. And, and then you put the water. And then we're gonna put the little uncooked french fries inside. So we will have to wait around two hours and we'll come back to see the end result. So we left this for two hours and this is the end result. So this is the potato that had salty water. Whoa, this one's really hard. This is really light. Wow. Whoa. It's like soggy. It's like a cooked spaghetti. <laughs> what? It's I know. so crazy. It's like almost see-through how much it, it changed. So Seth, how does this work? So the concentration of the salty water is more than in the potato. Oh, so the salty water sucked the water in the potato? Yeah. 
And as for this one, the concentration of the potato is more than in the water. Oh, so the potato sucked the water? Yeah. Oh wow, this is really, really cool. Yeah, and this was a really, really cool and interesting experiment and I learned a lot from this. And you should try this at home because it's very easy, you just need potato, salt, water, yeah. just just and basic to, ingredients, yeah. very easy. And remember to tag us at hashtag Summers Lab. Also, if you want to check out our other videos, you can click up here. This is Seth. And this is Stacy. And this is Summers Lab! Stacy, have you ever thought of bursting a balloon with an orange? I've thought of hitting a balloon with an orange and then it bursts. Well, there's a bit of an easier way. There is? Yeah, and I'm going to show you in today's experiment. Yes! Let's get started. So for this experiment, you're going to need orange peels and, of course, balloons. So I'm going to hand you an orange peel. Mm -hmm. And what we're going to do is also make sure you do this in the daytime when, and tell all your family members like that you're going to do this because they'll be scared if you don't. So, Are you sure this going to work? Yeah. We're going to squeeze the juices from the lemon peels out onto the balloon and they're going to pop. Like really like intact? Yeah. Are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure you want to do this? Okay, okay, let's go. I want to hear it pop. <laughs> oh my, my And as I told you, it is really, really, really loud. I'm going to do another one. Pop. Oh no. Pop. Oh my. Oh. 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 <laughs> How does this work? So the orange peel has an oil called lemonin. Oh, which weakens the rubber and makes the balloon pop. Yeah. Oh, I get it now. We really, 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 really enjoyed this experiment. Even though it hurt our ears a lot, we really enjoyed it. Yeah, and make sure you do this at home, but do it outside. It's yeah. very, very loud and very um, scary. <laughs> so do it outside and tag us at hashtag Simmers Lab. This is Seth. And this is Stacy. And this was Simmers Lab. Stacy, do you like glitter? I love glitter and we have some amazing colors so I'm very excited. Yeah, today we're making a glitter fountain. Whoa. Yeah, so t for today's experiment we'll need vinegar, glitter, baking soda, a bowl, and food coloring. So let's get started. So first we're going to put the food coloring. Okay, I'll use blue. And I'll do pink. So we're going to put it in layers. So like a strip and yeah, then, a strip. yeah. Now we're going to add the, the glitter on top. Glitter, my favorite part. So I'm going to do my favorite color. Okay, and I'm going to do my favorite color. So we're also going to do in strips, but like opposite. Okay, now we're going to add the baking soda. So we're going to cover the whole thing with baking soda. So yeah. Let me make it Yeah, let me make it flat. Okay, that's fine. Pancake. Then now we're going to add the, the vinegar. vinegar. Which is the really fun part. So we're going to add it on the sides. Yeah. Okay. Just like that. Whoa! That is so cool. Wow. <laughs> Look it's at so that! Beautiful. I see the mixtures. Okay, now the blue is wow. Huge. The blue is overpowering. It. Yeah, because it, it was the least. It had the least. I put the least. Blue. No, it was the most. Yeah, that's for the glitter. Ah, that's cool. Wow. The mixing. What if we add more? The green. Yeah, we should add more. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh wow. look at that. That is so cool. So, how does this work? Well, okay, so the baking soda is a base while the vinegar is an acid. When mixed, they form a solution that breaks apart into water and carbon dioxide. This creates all the fizzing as it escapes the solution, and then we get this. Whoa! Look at our hands. Air five. Comment down below if you like glitter. Hashtag glitter gang. Subscribe, <laughs> like, and uh, we'll see you in the next episode. See ya! Seth, aren't you just tired of blowing up all these balloons? Yeah, and look how much we have left. Wow. I wish there was a way out. Luckily there is. In today's experiment, we're going to be blowing up balloons with vinegar and baking soda. 
So the ingredients are a bottle of vinegar, baking soda, a funnel, and of course the balloons. Yay! Let's get started. Okay, so first you want to take the funnel mm -hmm. and insert it into the balloon. Just like that. And then you're going to put some baking soda. So put a little violet in and you shake. So that it can go in. I think that's enough. Yeah. Okay, so now the next part, you put the balloon on the bottle. So it's going to be very hard, so we're going to remove our gloves. Only for this part. So we put the balloon here. So we expanded the balloon. Put it like that. <laughs> Oh my god. You need some help? I think I got it. Ha. Then we're going to lift the balloon. Ready? One, two, two three. three. We're ready. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. I feel like it's going to bust. <laughs> you just didn't get it on a bit. Oh, look at that. That was so cool. Oh it saves God. time. <laughs> so, Seth, how does this work? Well, okay, so the baking soda is a base while the vinegar is an acid. Oh, so when they mix, they form a solution that breaks apart into water and carbon dioxide. Yeah, then the carbon dioxide fills up the balloon and then we get this amazing end result. Wow, this was so much fun to make. We hope you enjoyed too. So this was Simmons Lab with Seth. And Stacy. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe. See ya. So Seth, do you think you can balance me on a seesaw? Mm, I think I'll make you go flying because I'm like 200 kgs. <laughs> Lies. So guys, we're going to be making a candle seesaw. Wow, that sounds awesome. Let's get started. So guys, for this experiment, we need a matchbox, a double-sided candle, two glasses, and two toothpicks. So beforehand, we had an adult stick two toothpicks on both sides of the candle and two glasses, we balanced it between two glasses and we're gonna have an adult light the candle wick with matchbox. Yeah, make sure there's an adult to help you because we are dealing with fire yeah. and we have to be cautious. So I'm going to remove my gloves because I don't want them to catch fire. But we did have an adult light the both sides of the candles and now we'll see it slowly start to go up and down like a seesaw. Oh. Guys, look. Like going up and down like a seesaw now. Yeah. Like really well. And dripping. And Whoa. yeah, maybe uh, have something that you can like get the, like something kind of disposable so that you can get the wax off. Whoa. Now it's an actual seesaw. This is you, this is me. <laughs> it's going up and down like a seesaw. So Stacy, how does this work? Well, when this side of the candle drips, this side becomes heavier. So when this side of the candle drips, this side becomes heavier? Yeah. Oh, like a seesaw. Exactly. We really, really enjoyed this experiment. It's pretty easy and pretty fun to watch it go up and down and up yeah. and down. But as we said, you need adult assistance slash supervision because it's, we're, again, we're handling fire here. Yeah. Remember to tag us, hashtag Simmons Lab. And if you want to see our other videos, click right up here. This is Seth. And this is Stacy. And this is Simmons Lab. Stay connected with me on the Super Summer YouTube channel.